I've um, been coordinating a project for about the last eight months, which is a trial of a commercial sized worm farm looking at um, solutions for business. The Green Living Centre is a place based environmental education centre based in Newtown in inner Sydney, which includes the suburbs of Newtown, Enmore, and Erskineville. There's about 800 or so businesses in our retail strip and about a third of those are food based businesses. At the moment, pretty much all of their food waste is taken away in a truck by a myriad of private contractors and taken and left to rot in landfill. Um, and there's not that many solutions for businesses to um, have good sustainable solutions for their food waste. Um, but worm farms work really well for households, especially when you don't have very much space, which is one of the issues in Newtown. So why can they not work for businesses? Uh, we all know that worms can eat a lot of food in a day and that they produce a really high quality output. Um, the other options that are available for businesses at the moment, A, is to have a private contractor take your food waste away um, and turn it into, use the methane from when it rots as um, energy generation. Or um, there's a bunch of different products on the market which are basically dehydrators or digesters, which are really good at reducing the volume of the food waste. They can reduce it by maybe 90% overnight, but they don't create a proper composted um, product. The, what, the product that comes out still needs to be composted further and you can't just put it straight on the garden. So it's only a partial solution, although it does solve some of the space issues. The system that I've been trialling is made from a converted 1500 litre skip bin, which can fit in the bin bay of a business. Um, our, the first phase of our trial, we collected food waste from two local businesses. One was a boost jar, a, boost, a juice bar, um, which meant that we fed it with really acidic inputs, which we've all been taught is a big no-no for worm farms. Um, but I think we sometimes can be a bit precious about worm farms and compost and they can, they're a bit, a bit more robust than we think and they can take a lot of things that you wouldn't think that they could. Um, so we just made sure to neutralise the pH by adding dolomite with every feed. Um, and it coped absolutely fine. Um, our trial is based at the Green Living Centre and managed by us, i.e. me. Um, collecting food from the businesses or they bring it to us and then I weigh it and feed the worms and check if there's any flies or any smell or anything that might need a little bit of TLC. We managed to digest around 30% of the food from the juice bar and then the second business that we worked with was a restaurant and you can see that's in the picture there, they've got a much better mix of food um, and we managed to digest 100% of their fruit and veggie scraps. Um, which equated to a whole wheelie bin a week because the volume of it was quite big, even though it was only 20 or 25 kilos a week. Um, it, we've never ever had to empty the castings yet. We've been going for eight months. So we've put around 800 kilos into this bin, never emptied any castings, but we do empty around about 20 litres of wormweed a week. So that's where the volume is all going. It's turning to liquid. Um, the limitations of the system is that it can only digest maybe 20 to 25 kilos a week depending on the season and the inputs. Um, and that's about the size of a small restaurant. As I said, it took 100% of the waste from this restaurant, but it was only about 30% of the juice bar. And I, did, um, I had a couple of other restaurants that were interested, but their volume would have required maybe three or four of these systems to cope with the amount that they had. Um, it also needs a really regular and stable amount of food. You can't just use it for, say, a festival and put all 800 kilos in in one time. You've, it, it gets used to how much food you feed it and it needs to have about that amount each week. Um, and ideally it needs to service a garden on site because if you've got 20 litres of wormweed, it needs to be used. Like, this stuff is gold and there's all this terrible soil around and it needs to be where that fertiliser needs to be and not then have more transport logistics of trucking it somewhere else or whatever. Um, yeah, there's the stats of how much we use. We um, got an analysis done on the castings and just like in a normal worm farm, it's really good, basically. Um, but it's high in phosphorus and not great for native plants, so it's much better for food gardens. Phase two of our trial is to set up the restaurant uh, with an on-site system for them to self-manage and see how it goes being managed by the kitchen hands and the chef rather than by me. 
um, which is a big leap in the care factor. Um, and we're also helping the restaurant set up a kitchen garden so that they've got somewhere on site to use the fertiliser and make it, make it a resource rather than a waste product. Uh, we're also setting up a system with an apartment building that has a similar amount of food per week to let them self-manage and use the outputs on their garden. Um, if anyone has any questions, I may or may not be here by this afternoon because I've got my two-year-old with me and he may run out of patience. So if you have questions, you can contact me at the Green Living Centre, uh, which you'll find either through Marrickville or City of Sydney Councils.